This is interactive core memory. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, what core memory is, what makes it interactive, then I'm going to talk about how this project came to be. This will be pretty fast paced so you can find me afterwards if you want to find out more. Um, then I'll give you a little bit of demo action and there's a little, I got a surprise in here, there's another Hackaday project that I collaborated with that's part of this. And then okay. Whatever you don't touch it. So uh, first up, core memory uh, is cool. Um, it is these little teeny tiny rings that are woven into the wires. There's 64 of them on the front of this core 64 kit. They are ferrite, which is magnetizable. So you can magnetize it either clockwise or counterclockwise, and you arbitrarily call that one or zero, and that's your RAM. You've got one bit of RAM in this little ring of ferrite. There are, in that middle picture, that one's oriented correctly. This one's oriented off axis. But in the middle picture, there's horizontal and vertical wires. Those wires, uh, when you do a combined current of 400 milliamps through there, that's enough current to magnetize the core, but it's only 200 milliamps per wire. So the rest of the uh, cores in that row are, or column are not getting enough magnetic flux to change. So that's how you address each of them. <clears throat> that diagonal wire is the sense wire and that's what's used to detect if the core changed state, which is part of the read write, or part of the reading operation, which is destructive. Like I said, I, I think core memory is just cool because it's these, it's such a tangible way to see ones and zeros. Like you actually weave this stuff together and you get ones and zeros. By the way, they come pre-programmed as zeros. It's just because everybody has to say that. It has the unique feature of being non-volatile. Um, it's magnetic. You magnetize it. It stays that way indefinitely. Uh, along with that is this destructive read, which I alluded to. You You actually have to write a one, say, to the core. And if the core changes state, that means it was a zero. And then you have to write back a zero. So that's kind of a unique part of it. This does all that. This is authentic core memory. Um, it's being done by, in this case, a, um, a Raspberry Pi Pico. So it's doing the reading and writing through transistors driving this matrix. <clears throat> Very historical stuff. It was used all throughout the 60s and 70s. This stuff is really popular in that era, especially so the uh, Apollo guidance computer used it as its RAM and its ROM which is really cool. And that was talked about a lot in the last, I think it was last year was the 50th anniversary of uh, Apollo Guidance Computer, or the Apollo program. And it's magnets, magnets. Like, I just think magnetism is cool. And this, like that propelled a lot of this because I just kept experimenting with it. And it's like, oh, this is just fun, so. So what makes it interactive is it's the core memory, and then you put the LEDs behind it to show you the states of the cores. And then you bring a magnet in, and now things start to happen in real time. This, uh, these demos here are just, they're what you see right there, those magnets. That's the flux coming off those magnets and where it interacts with the cores. And I think what's really interesting is that's not what I expected with a cube of magnets is that the flux only leaks out of the very edges. It's otherwise fully constrained around the, the faces. So I thought that was really cool. Uh, how did this project come to be? Glad you asked. This project came to be because uh, I'd seen a lot of uh, demo or uh, examples of core memory in museums like the Computer History Museum and the Living, Living Computers Museum plus Labs, which is currently closed. Um, 
I looked around the internet, found this project by North and Nash, which many of you may have seen. They just built this, I think, for a college class of some sort. They weren't selling it. I was looking around. I wanted to find something. Somebody has to make this. And then I found it on Tindy. This kit here, uh, current, that's, that's a current photo right off of Tindy. It's being sold right now. This fellow named uh, Yussi in Finland makes this four by eight, yeah, four by eight matrix that goes on top of an Arduino, and then you can program it. So I bought that, built it, and then I started, I'm like, what do I do with this? Mm -hmm. And I came up with the idea of, well, what if I made an LED matrix show what the state of the cores are? So that's the very, very early prototype that I did, or proof of concept, not even a prototype. And I kind of stumbled into the fact that you could draw in core memory. This is a slightly refined version of that. Um, I found a, what would I call that? I think that's a feather wing from Adafruit that happened to be almost the same pitch as the cores. I had to make that little 3D printed blue thing to kind of guide, light guide, to guide it up to the cores to line things up. And I brought that to share a hack after 2019 Maker Faire. And I, you know, I got this little project and people were showing off really cool stuff. I'm like, you guys want to see my project? Yeah. And the feedback was like, yes, that's like super cool. You got to build that. And so that's this community, the extension of this community too, inspired me to go further. So I did that. Had to learn how to make circuit boards. Highly recommend Sean and Chris as your uh, instructors. I went through those uh, online, it's YouTube stuff. Uh, they start out with blinking an LED and a circuit board. So I followed the tutorial, chose KiCad because it was compatible with my Mac and I wanted to work on the Mac. And um, built my first prototype, which is this one right here. Does anybody see any mistakes in that? They should be pretty <laughs> obvious. That's what an OR gate looks like uh, when you make it out of transistors and resistors after you discover you forgot to put an OR gate in. Or uh, more honestly, I didn't know I needed an OR gate. And then I'm like, oh, OK. So made mistakes, made boards. OK, this is really cool. Um, there was, there's a guy, he uh, goes by the name of Muth on Hackaday, uh, Hackaday.io. He created neon pixels individually addressable neon bulbs. There's a PIC microcontroller at the bottom, a 5 to 90 volt boost on there, and then those um, the individual tubes. And I just happened to have brought it along so you guys can check this out afterwards. So I had reached out to him. There we go. And I said, you know, I think uh, Core memory and neon were meant to be together. So he sent me a set, a, a, a whole assembly like that. So he and I are the only ones that have these right now because we, you know, traded. But this is a lot of fun. You actually get to draw with a magnet in neon. So you guys got to check this out afterwards. Yeah, it's, it, this is monochrome. Beautiful orange monochrome. I could just like watch that all day. <laughs> So I encourage you to check out his project. It's a Hackaday I.O. project, uh, Neon Pixels. Super cool. Uh, demo time. It's obviously in the badge form factor. This is the small one. I also have a, this is actually the first, uh, the first one that I did. The first form factor, I should say. So this is just the same thing, just in a larger form factor. This allows you to kind of poke at it with an oscilloscope and really get in there and understand what's going on with all the transistors. This one's just a little bit more compact to wear. But they do the exact same thing. Uh, some of the things they do are, I've got a menu on here, which it's probably much easier to see up there. It's the upper left picture. This is a 
total accident, but I think you'll appreciate it. That's my degauss menu. So there's a D, a G-A-U-S-S, -S, and that's demos, games, apps, utilities, special, and settings. <laughs> I was, I, I just couldn't believe that that worked out that way. And then, so you can touch those and you can go into the different, you know, functionality. Um, next picture over center on the top is drawing mode. Or if you have an OLED screen connected in there, you can do binary to hex. That says dead beef and code cafe. If you ever, ever wondered what that looks like in 64 bits of binary, that's what it looks like. Uh, it's a flux detector as well, so play with magnets. You can, there, there's a mode in here to do that. Bottom left is a game of snake. Center on the bottom is a game of pong, two player pong. These come with, I'm, I am selling these by the way. These are available. They come with uh, two styli, so you can do two player games because interactive. You know? And then uh, there's a flux key. This is kind of a fun one. So this is that drawing mode that we were in. And if you have the right magnetic flux in your flux key, and you put this on here, you got. <laughs> So you got a 64-bit, you know, password code to get into your secret lair or something like that. It, this thing, it's designed to be hacked and, and learned from. And this is me, like, building it and then just experimenting with things and stumbling into all this stuff. Um, it's open source. Uh, there are three of us wearing these. My brother is here and my son. They're hiding back there. So there's at least three of these wandering around, and you guys feel free to stop us and like the whole point is to share this stuff because this is where the inspiration came from. Oh, and there's a bunch of expandability on it. There's an SIO port, of course, on these. Uh, I squared C, quick, spy, uh, GPIO, you can put all sorts of fun stuff on there. I think that's all I'll say about that. And Q&A time, I've got, these are probably frequently asked questions, but what, any questions that have come up from you guys? <laughs> What's, yeah, my Domino's order? Uh, meat lovers. Hey Siri. <laughs> Go ahead. So do they come as kits or something? They, they are kits. And the kit part of it, oh, better yet. All the surface mount stuff is done. Uh, you have to, oh, I mean, you get to weave the core memory. <laughs> There's some through hole stuff, the battery pack you got to put in there. Pretty, pretty straightforward. The challenge is the weaving. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's, that's probably a four to six hour thing the first time you do it, and I do not recommend doing it in one setting, sitting. Um, I can do it in about two hours now, and I've done a dozen of them. So it's, it's challenging, but there's techniques, and I've got a video, several videos that kind of show some of the techniques to get the wires to go where you want them to. Those are the two sizes. More, yes. Yes, good okay. eye, good eye. Well, like the functionality on them, if you just want to control the screen, is it like one more responsive than the other? Or? No, it's absolutely identical. Okay. The only thing that's different is Teensy versus Pico. Okay. So, um, yeah, and I had, there isn't quite enough. So I set out with a Teensy because I wanted uh, discrete I.O. for every single transistor. There's 20 transistors to drive that matrix. And then Teensy's became not available. And then the Pico came on the scene. So didn't have enough IO, so I did this shift register thing and it's same effect. I yeah. asked uh, which version of the Teensy you were working with? The 3.2. I was working with the 3.2 recently and I found that the support in their official IDEs was lacking. So I'm switching over to a Pico. 
Okay. Yeah. The, the community is getting really strong with Pico and yeah. there's bugs in Pico too. So did you have a question? Go ahead. I, I haven't experimented with that other than I started with some resistor values for the current that were recommended and I went up and down a couple of values just to see what the effect would be because I wanted to make sure it was reliable, you know, where it was, but I haven't really experimented with that. Sorry, blind. <laughs> My understanding is that these are, it's indefinite. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but, but yeah. Correct, yeah. One, one of the, I, just a quick point on that. Um, one of the reasons it was really beneficial in the Apollo program is because all that RAM is there, the computer goes down, you have to reset it, you come back, you come back up, and the RAM is in the exact state that it was. And that was, I think, a, a big benefit. So, go ahead. To his point, uh, have you noticed since you're directly seeing what changes? Have, has the display changed? Like, get some swap? I haven't. Notice? I have not seen that happen. But I have I have watched for that. Just and how much do you saw? Uh, the, the, these are the ones I have available right now, $160 for the whole kit. Batteries included, alkalines, not not lithium, but you can you can upgrade to lithium. So, was there another hand going up? Yes. No, I, I haven't programmed that, but that is a great idea. And uh, I also want to do multicolor drawings so that when you're on there, you can um, kind of airbrush and have the colors. You can choose from a palette and then have the colors blend and save them. Make your own startup image. So, any more questions? No. Okay. Well. Oh, uh, I forgot about this slide. The future. Uh, three things I wanted to uh, shout out. If you guys are interested or know somebody to help me out, I'm looking to do. These need to communicate with each other, like all good badges ought to, and it's got to be through magnetic fields. <laughs> So if anybody has any ideas, I've got some of these NFC uh, breakout boards from Adafruit that I'm going to try. It's only one to one. I'd like to do one to many. Um, if anybody would like to help with writing user guide, uh, you know, stuff like that, learning guide eventually, that's my style manual. That's the style I'm going to follow right there in the middle. Hopefully you guys recognize that. Oh, and hopefully you recognize that the logo, did you guys, I hope that logo in the middle there reminds you of a certain awesome 8-bit computer. <laughs> and then I would love to make the manufacturing turnkey. I need to upgrade my robot there. So if anybody has any suggestions uh, that they want to throw at me for somebody who would want to take on doing turnkey manufacturing, I would uh, entertain that. So. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I'm making a weaving fixture. I'm trying to see if I can make something that I could sell, that I could just include in the kit to make life easier. Because that's the number one feedback is, ooh, I don't know if I want to weave that. <laughs> and you can't afford me to weave it for you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.